Hello, I'm Tosh Berman, and uh, usually I play my favorite, not play my favorite, I discuss my favorite books, but today I'm going to talk about my favorite record. Um, I look at music as much as I look at books, and uh, books and music I don't separate whatsoever, so both are equally as important to me. And uh, I'm a huge uh, music buyer. I won't say I'm a music collector, I'm more of a music buyer. But I really, really have very specific taste, and I'm very much interested for a long time now into the, uh, the works of Joe Meek, uh, a North London producer, so you're do it your, yourself uh, DIY producer. And I actually, when I went to London a couple of times in uh, the past 10 years, I always stopped by his studio, uh, not inside the studio, but on his outside the studio on Holloway Road in North London. And um, the reason why I have a fixation on Joe Meek, not only because of his dynamic story, his narrative of his life, but also because of his sound. His particular sound really captured me at a very early age. The very first Joe Meek record I ever heard was Have I the Right by the Honeycombs. Now, of course, when I heard it at nine or ten years old, I didn't know who Joe Meek is, was at the time. Uh, I just know the name, the Honeycombs. And I discovered the Honeycombs probably on my local radio station at that time, which would either be KHJ or KRLA in Los Angeles. And um, when I heard the record, I think for some people, when they heard something like Anarchy in the UK, it really turned their lives around just by the sound and just by the fierceness of the, of the, of the sound of that record. The Honeycombs have I the right to exactly the same thing for me. But even that, have I the right, just the, the title, have I the right, uh, had an emotional pull for me. And I think maybe due to my shyness at the time, and I'm still quite a shy person, uh, have I the right seemed to be so forceful. Though the title is Have I the Right with a question mark, so it's Have I the Right. And um, I'm just going to play you the song. And um, uh, what more I could say about it is that um, there are some strange things for me at the time was that the Honeycombs had a girl drummer, a woman drummer, by the name of Honey, which I presume where the Honeycombs name came from. And um, she looked like, at the time, so on rock and roll. She had this sort of beehive hairdo that's not like the Shangri-La's hairdo at the time, but sort of this more sort of an English mum look. And the juxtaposition of this mummish looking woman playing the drums for the honeycombs was a weird juxtaposition for me. And uh, this always stayed with me, this image. And uh, it was till many years later, you know, I bought the record when I was 9 or 10, played it to death, and I never forgot the song, but about, oh gosh, like 20, 25 years, 30 years later, I can't remember now, I was taking a trip through Japan, and it was in a very small town called Mojiko, which is in the island of Kishu. And there, I found um, a, a stereo shop that just sold uh, uh, cassette machines, and they had a very small, very small selection of, uh, of CDs uh, sold there, as well as cassettes. And most of the inventory was uh, Japanese Enka music. But they had like five or six Western music. Uh, one, I remember they had like Jan and Dean, they had um, the Beach Boys, and for some reason they had the Four Seasons, and they had a particular Honeycombs album, which uh, I purchased there, and I still have it to this day. It's one of my all-time favorite albums. But here I'm going to play you the Honeycombs Have I the Right, uh, which has almost sort of a mystical, blissful uh, effect on me. So we're going to play it right now. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, come right back, come right back. This is Tosh, Tosh Berman, Tosh Talks. I'll be seeing you.